if you don't feel anxious walking to the first tee and I don't care who it is you're playing I don't care what level it is I don't care what you've done before if you don't then you're an alien you're not a human being Sorry, Scotland. Hello. Hello everybody uh, first of all I'd like to welcome Dr Mark Nesty Mark is a golf psychologist, um, sports psychologist more specifically, but he's currently working with lots of different um, tour players and other other sports people throughout um, throughout the world and different variations of sports, from Olympians to, to golf pros to, to swimmers to, to many types of different athletes. Mark, would you like to introduce yourself as to maybe give a, a little bit of an insight into your background? Yeah, tell you exactly who I work with. Um, uh, that's not the sort of thing, but I can tell you what level they're at um, and where they've been. And, and of course, I've done a lot of work in golf. And the reason there's a lot of work in golf is because everybody knows this, do they not? Surely that this is the most psychological sport of all the normal, usual sports. Let's put it that way. It's absolutely clear. So I don't think you can work as a sports psychologist unless you hate golf yeah. and not have golfers coming your way. So golf has been ever present for the last 30 years of my work, um, working at Euro Pro. Um, challenge Tour, I'm working with a couple of uh, European Tour um, golfers at the moment who both um, had successes and both, both won on, the, on that, um, that at that level on that tour uh, and then with coaches, with mm -hmm. coaches and, and uh, people who are around uh, golf in, in other capacities um, people who are specialists in whether it's uh, swing mechanics or putting yeah. or a whole host of areas so yeah, lots of experience around golfers and maybe just to finish on that um, a lot of, I think, a lot of um, very fortunate encounters with people in golf who are looking for something different, yeah, yeah. are always trying to do something different, and I think that's uh, exciting, and that's you know how we come to be. And lots of parallels between what you've what you've learned from working with those players, and how you can then merge that and help the average golfer, which is a big part of what we're doing at the moment. We're trying to merge the the, the elite side of life into the golfing life, and how the how they are quite similar more than what people would suspect absolutely and and i think it's it's you know paradox is a word that i'm going to be using a lot of times when i, I speak and i don't hope uh, that uh, i'll overuse it and, and sound like i'm hiding behind it but exactly what you said alex it's it's many similarities to you know any level of the game mm. and also very great differences and and i think it's hearing the differences and people might be surprised at some of the differences and think never thought of that mm. so they actually have to contend with that well, wait a minute, I have to contend with that in my professional life, in my work life, my business life, yeah. my relationship life, my broader life. So usually we've got some connection. It just might not be that you experience it if you are not doing this for your living yeah. under intense pressure. Yeah. But yeah, drawing stories back and forward. So in that sense, I mean, who am I? I'm not a great golfer. We've, you know, we've had sessions together and you know what I'm like. Yeah. I'm, uh, yeah, improving, I think is the word. <laughs> um, however, that's not what I think I've got to offer. I think I've been really lucky that I've listened to great people who've been telling me things. I've had great dialogue yeah. and encounters with a whole range, and that's connected in my mind. Mm -hmm. And if you like, I've got a web of information that has um, been reinforced from practice and different levels, um, people with different takes on it, as well as with theoretical ideas. And it's been like a filtering. I've put it this way more than. I've learned completely new material, I have at times, but it's more a filtering exercise. It's like, I've heard that in so many different places. Mm -hmm. That's something really solid. That's, that is from good people and it's solid and that works. And that, I think, is what I've got to share. So it's not a lot, yeah, yeah. but it's something. And going back to the, the parallels of the, the elite side of things to the amateur side of things, that three foot putt for your club championship or the monthly medal, whatever it may be, creates the same feelings as that what we've had or major winners have when they stood over that three footer for the win it's about human emotion we are the same we're not different to anyone we still experience it the same way so understanding physiology and all those sort of things that can help those guys who are playing on the weekend absolutely not just the ones who are trying to basically make a living from the game absolutely um and you make a really important point as well alex which i'm sure will um be a relief to some and it will frustrate some who are going to come on maybe and listen and say, right, some new guys, some new material. I want to hear something fresh and new and different. And sometimes you might. But I think a lot of the time to actually get to fresh things or to hear something fresh means removing mm -hmm. something. 
And I think there's one straight away. It's like, what, you mean the experiences that I have are the experiences that I'm always more or less going to have? Yes, because some of the greatest players of this sport talk about in major events and competitions standing over a ball and they can't feel their body, that they're absolutely shaking. Yeah. That exactly all the things that you've experienced, whether it's in a lesson, whether it's a club championship, whatever it is. So to hear the things that we share and accept that accepting those is going to be actually what's required mm -hmm. is a massive ask. Mm -hmm. Everybody is looking for things to be removed and things to be made perfect and taken away. Well, part of the process is actually saying, no, these things can be improved, but actually an improvement over here is accepting that these other things are inevitable. Yeah and deal with them, as it were, in your own way, find your own way, but but don't go hunting and searching for some magical gurus to remove those for you. There's too much of that been going on yeah. in psychology, or and a magical say, golf, golf psychology. or a new putter, or anything like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Same thing. Absolutely. Same Different thing. Context. But yeah, I'm sure that they will all enjoy what you've got to say, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll definitely hear from you again. Well, they won't all enjoy it, but I hope they get something <laughs> from it. <laughs> <laughs> I've just got up to Stirling to pick my team up for the Glen Eagles Pro-Am and <laughs> as soon as they got off the train the morning how cold it is but here they come now <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're currently at Glen Eagles playing in the, the Pro Am, and there's my team down there. Second shots on the 10th hole, and I've never played so incompetent in my entire life. Granted, it's freezing, I've actually got two hoodies on the jumper, Under Armour. I'm not filming because it's raining, I don't want to damage the microphone, but God, there's some incompetent things I've done. Wedge into a par five, four footed, emotions are running high. <laughs> and let's see what we can try and do with this back nine. But so far, not so good. Wow. Of course it's playing all right. It's windy today. The first um, eight holes have been straight into the wind, which has made it really tough. To give you an example, one of the holes was 120 yards and a little seven iron, so that's how windy it is. But it's kind of dropped down a little bit now. But this is interesting. We've not played it before, so it's, it's difficult to, to gauge. What a shot! He's played a worldy there. Well, that was the first week wrapped up. Um, nice to get to Glen Eagles. Pretty prestigious place. The scenery is beautiful, really. The, the format of the week was a pro-am, four-man team, and obviously with the individual prize fund that I play for as the pro. Results-wise, I finished third, and the team finished third as well. And <clears throat> now I'm just on my way back home, just pulled over at a service station and was going to get a Starbucks that was 30-odd people queuing, and is it really worth it? Is it that good anyway? <laughs> the answer is no. But just um, having a little bit of a reflection time on, I try and do this the following day. I don't specifically do it after the round because sometimes you can be still emotionally charged and you don't really think about things as logically as you possibly can do if you just let the dust settle a little bit. It comes down to putting and that affects the score massively and fine margins in golf. Two shots shy of winning uh, and I think about all the little putts that, we've, that I've missed um, which could have constituted in winning it, hands down. And everybody's got their own story. I'm not taking anything away from the guys who finished first and second. They will have their own moments of this, but that's just that's just golf. But I'm thinking about the way how I'm dealing with it. So the performance side of things was actually okay. I played quite good tee to green, um, hit some really good shots at the right time, which is always nice so early on in the season. Um, I got into the mix. I was I was way behind going into the final round and I needed to get off to a good start in order to try and like still think about winning, which I was doing. I was four under through four, which doesn't happen very often, but it did. 
uh, and unfortunately I just I kind of let it slip and I finished four under and it was still like tough conditions the weather wasn't wasn't amazing how do I now deal with this real it's still a niggle 24 hours later it's, it's still annoying me the fact that I missed so many putts and then it's something oh is it my putting stroke is it the putter all these things that I think that the average golfer may encounter so the thoughts and feelings that it can produce and my advice for that would be do not feed it do not let putting in my in this this week's case affect me the following week so don't plant the seed of doubt and that seed of doubt can grow into something from nothing just have a little bit of a reality check so you're thinking right okay i've got a ball that's not purely round i've got a square putter face which used to be square and flat um but now they've got ridges and grooves in them i'm hitting it over irregular terrain i.e grass it's not a put a pure flat surface definitely not this week and definitely not the majority of the year in england so this idea of getting the ball in the hole is actually difficult even though putting is a simple task it's a totally different game to golf almost it's golf but it's like golf within golf two different games um i could quite easily get my grandma to to hit a putt but i definitely couldn't get her to hit a 160 yard drive that is for sure so the psychology and the impact of how putting affects so much of the game yet it is the easiest part and sometimes i think that it's easy uh, it's that easy it becomes harder because you expect to hold those three four footers so you think oh wh how can i miss that how can i hit the ball 300 yards or whatever it is and then go miss a putt from <laughs> three foot well for that reason it's irregular um terrain wise and you have got a, a huge percentage of the ball missing so how do you reflect on that and not let um, the emotional charge which you can possibly still sense in my voice which is interesting as I'm documenting it because I've never done it this way and it's, it's sparking thoughts now thinking about it but I'm to be sure that next time I go and play I will be stripping everything right back taking it back to basics taking it back into what is a putt a putt is just a putt anyway whether it's on good greens or bad greens what am I doing to try and really encourage myself to get lost in the moment of not getting sucked into oh well last time i played my putting was terrible so i hope today it's not going to be terrible well unfortunately that's almost like reverse psychology yourself and you are planting that seed before you've even started so scrap that now you have to have this ability to take it all back take it for what it is have a good um preconception of what it is that you want to achieve when you go into the putting green so you want to start tapping into the reading of the putt the feel of the putt so the pace um, the feel of the ball hitting the putter, Im imagination, um, allowing your visualization to act on what you actually want it to do. So you start focusing, feeling like the way that you breathe, all these things that you might not have even thought about. That goes into more of an internal awareness of what it is that you're actually doing. So getting lost in the task again through enjoying it. It's a bit like reading a book. You sometimes read a book and you lose it. You lose all the sense of time because you're enjoying the book so much. Other times you read a book because you've got other things on your mind. In this case, you might be thinking about your bad putting performance, previous event, or the previous day, uh, or the previous hour. If you then feel like you've got to go to the driving range or you've got to go to the putting green to sort it out now. <laughs> so no, just embrace that chaos. There's a different way to do it. Don't feed it even more. Um, so sometimes you get, you get lost in the book and you, don't, you get lost in the book in the wrong way where you don't actually have a clue what you've just read because you've got other things on your mind. So take that analogy into being able to help yourself get back on the horse and get back to playing golf for the reason that you want to play is to like just be creative, be fluent, um, enjoy the movement, take the sport for what it is, just get the ball in the hole and as least shots as possible. Today's a different day from tomorrow, tomorrow's a different day from the following day. So just like try and get a little bit of consistency in what it is that you want to achieve and how you do it because ultimately putting is easy but it's also hard because it's easy. Ask another quick fire question. Should I feel anxious walking to the first tee? So is anxiety a good or a bad thing? Is it natural? What do, what do we know about that? Well, let's put it this way. If you don't feel anxious walking to the first tee, and I don't care who it is you're playing, I don't care what level it is, I don't care what you've done before. If you don't, then um, you're an alien. You're not a human being. All human beings feel anxious. Anxiety is a sign, first of all, that you care about something, and to care about something is usually quite good. And anxiety relates to not knowing 
exactly what's going to happen in the future. So it's built into us. If what you're asking is, is there a problem if that anxiety is so intense and severe that the club feels as if it weighs about 10 tonnes and my body feels like concrete? Well, that's a different story. Then we've real got problems. You can do something about it. But maybe the real message is, expect to feel anxiety. You can still perform really good stuff even when you're feeling a bit anxious. It's quite normal. As a tournament professional over the years, I've I've often realised that it's not always just about the swing. But we do have this feeling, this awful feeling, when our swing totally goes away from us and we have no idea where to look, where to, where to find it. And it seems to be sometimes, often the case, it can be a matter of time. We can sometimes go down the route of uh, trying different clubs, having a, a lesson with a different coach, just to try and find something that gets us back on track. But do we really lose our physical swing or is it something different? <laughs> It, it's, this is going to sound like a shocking answer, but I think it's both. In that I think we do lose the natural swing that we've got, the, the feel that we've got. And remember, it could be something really quite significant, but more often than not, it's something very, very small. Look how incredibly technical and precise a golf swing is. And yet how bizarre it is that you never, ever swing a golf club ever the same way. Nobody ever has. Every swing is utterly unique that's ever been done. So that's a weird thing straight away. So then that tells you maybe the other side of the coin, which is actually, you don't really lose your swing, not to that point. What you do is more likely you, not your swing, but you, if you like, lose yourself. So the problem is not so much with your technical side and with your swing, it's more with you and your relationship to your golf, that you're expecting it to feel perfect all the time you're expecting it in a sense to disappear the best swing feel is that there's no feel at all and when you don't get that i think big problem for most of us and nearly everybody who plays the game is you go into a bit of a panic mode and wonder where it's gone it hasn't actually gone anywhere you've gone be patient it'll come back tweak a few things have a rest do anything change your eating do anything at all just to change scenarios, change your mind, and it'll come back nine times out of ten.